What is up guys? So I race cyclocross, some of you might already know. And a few months ago in a race, just around a really muddy corner, I kind of washed out and my DR2 derailleur stopped working. So today I basically just thought, you know, why not just tear it apart, see if any parts on it can be reused, and see if I can get to the motor inside here, and maybe even see the circuit board. So yeah, in today's video, I'm going to tear it apart, see what can be reused as spare parts, and also see if I can actually get to the electronics and see what they look like. So first you have the two circ clips. So you've got one here, and then you have another one there. So I'm going to start by removing those ones first. So as you can see, I've got the sir clips there. Got the little bolt there. Got a really unusual pattern. I'm gonna start by removing that one. So this is, so basically, this piece here connects to the motor in the DR2 derailleur. So if you possibly have a crash and this snaps or breaks, it can be used as a spare part. Pretty easy to remove. You just have a few circ clips and a weird shaped screw and that one comes off pretty easy. So now basically disconnected the motor piece so the hanger freely moves. So with SRAM hangers, it's based, I found it with my 4th 10 speed hanger, pretty much impossible to remove it from the derailleur. With the Shimano Ultegra, it's very easy. So let's say you have a crash and you snap your long cage derailleur and Shimano don't have any stock of long cage Jasu derailleurs, you could possibly buy a short cage one and top over the, um, the cages. That is a possibility. So that comes out of there. There's a little spring, so this bit comes out. So to remove that spring, there's a little silver screw in there that needs to be removed. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. The derailleur is pretty much to... Nothing else can be torn off it at the moment because there's no actual screws for these things, they're just plates. So there's no way that that can be removed. But, to get into the housing, there are... There are two screws. You've got one there, and one there. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and open those ones up now. Yep, so I've tried to open those ones, and it seems like... They are... They're screwed on there pretty tightly, so they've, they're a bit shre shredded. So um, I'm going to have to drill them out if I want to try and access the little motor in here. So I'm going to try that out, see how that goes. So I've drew, drew out that screw, as you can see, and I've drilled this one in a bit, but it seems like this plate needs to come off before the black plate can slide off.
So I just managed to take the little knob off the motor. So I was able to remove this plate. So I pretty much fully dismantled the um the DI2 derailleur. As you can see there's not really much left of it. So basically on the back part where the basically right here the the socket goes in for the electricity. And then this is your protector plate, and that sits pretty much on there, as you can see. So, after I took that out, I got to the motor. So this is pretty much your Ultegra DI2 unit, like in the electric part itself. So you've got the bit where the cord plugs in, and then you have the motor. So it doesn't really seem like this can really be opened, it seems like it's pretty sealed. I was hoping that maybe there'd be screws or something so you could see the circuitry. But no, nah, doesn't look like it, unfortunately. So, pretty much the stage we've got at, we've removed everything, the hardware, so stuck with this. You've got the cage. You've got this bit that attaches near the motor. So I was able to remove the plate off the back. I had to break it up a bit. Yeah, so this is a circuit board of the um, DI2 motor. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty small as well. Yeah, so I finally got into the motor. So that's the motor. Inside there is like a little... A little screw. So basically that, that screw turns. And here you've got all the gears. So if I take this off. You've got the plate, and this is the uh, the main shaft. You have the main shaft there. You have like a small little cog. There's a little magnet in there, which is pretty weird. Then you have two smaller cogs in there. Yeah, so the way the whole system works is pretty interesting. Like, it's just amazing that something this small can have so much power. Now that I have the motor fully assembled, I just wanted to connect electricity to it to see if the motor was actually the reason for the drain to stop working. So now the motor is actually on. Yeah, so the motor actually does work. So, it's pretty surprising. Um, so, knowing that the motor does work, I think that the circuit board, or the computer within the DI2 is actually programmed, so if there is a big hit, or something like that, that automatically cuts off the um, connection or the circuit to the motor. So, us, the consumer, we have to get a new one. So it is pretty disappointing that it is like that, but Fortunately, that's the way it is, and all the story, don't crash your DR2 derailleur. Thank you guys for watching, hope you enjoyed today's video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more.